So many cruisers are contacting me saying they're getting really frustrated because so many areas on cruise ships are being closed, making them only available to a select group of passengers. And what the lines are calling ships within ships and throwing exotic names at them like the Retreat, the Haven and the Yacht Club. These are eye-wateringly expensive, starting at $800, £700 per cabin per night, making them out of reach for most cruisers. But curiosity got to me. So I raided some savings and booked myself in the Yacht Club on MSC Virtuosa on a seven-night Norwegian Fjords cruise to see what their ship within a ship is all about and if you've got the cash, if it's actually worth it. Here's what I discovered. Now the Yacht Club I discovered covered several decks high up in the front of the ship. My cruise card granted me access through these big sliding glass doors on deck 16. Inside were all the Yacht Club cabins, a guest services concierge desk, the top cell lounge and bar with snacks all day, afternoon tea and live music in the evenings, the MSC Yacht Club restaurant with open seated dining for all meals and a dedicated menu and kitchen by the way, a large deck with plunge pool, hot tubs, bar and a grill serving breakfast and lunch. But I also got added perks including a premium drinks package, two devices, streaming internet, a butler, a pillow menu, a welcome bottle of Prosecco and chocolates, uh, daily canapes and various treats, access to the spa's thermal suite and some other perks that I'll come to which actually helped me navigate my way around the crowds and the lines around the ship which are pretty important. Now unlike other lines ship within the ships, your club has a big difference. It's not only suites. This means there are even some more affordable ways to get into this ship within a ship versus other lines. It had 15 inside cabins alongside, as you'd expect, two royal suites, eight duplex suites and 77 deluxe verandas, which is what I had booked. Now this cabin was probably the size wise more like a, a mini suite on many large and mid-sized ships that I've been on, though it was probably comparable in size to suites I've stayed in on smaller ship luxury lines like Seabourne, Silver Sea and Region 7 Sea. So not a massive kind of cabin, more a big veranda cabin. The decor was fairly neutral, was probably a little bit brown, had a good sized bathroom. It didn't have well-known branded toiletries that you'd expect in a premium place, but it just had dispensers, for example, in the shower, which was labeled body wash and shampoo, no fancy brand names. One big plus was the cabins are well away from noisy and busy venues and my cabin was incredibly quiet. I would say my cabin is probably one of the quietest if not the quietest I have had on any cruise ever. Because the ship is so modern and new even the air conditioning was very quiet so that was a big plus. Now as the yacht club is in the front of the ship and high up the restaurant had incredible views out of the vast windows. I had the most gorgeous scenes of the Norwegian fjords sitting at my table in the restaurant. So far I'm sure you're thinking this mostly sounds pretty exotic and rather wonderful but let me now talk about some other sides to the ship within a ship experience that raised more doubts and issues. MSC ships are big. MSC Virtuosa when full has 6,300 passengers. It's a jam-packed boisterous and noisy ship all over the place. One big plus the Yacht Club gave me was a less busy and a more calm place to escape the manicness of the ship. It felt like stepping out of a whirlwind of activity and noise into an immediately more sedate and a quieter space without hordes of people packed in. Although it was not totally quiet uh, because it wasn't just actually an adult space only. MSC is unashamedly family friendly line and so although for example there's 102 cabs in Yacht Club which means about 202 people at double occupancy because most of those have sofa beds and so on there could be 70 to even 100 kids in there at really peak times. Now my sailing was not within the school holidays so there were only a handful of families but they still did often kind of take over the small pool, uh, the kids would run around during afternoon tea, they would moan and cry, basically kind of be kids at meals which did wind some people up, uh, probably unnecessarily since it's a family line. Secondly, although it's supposed to be an exclusive area, clearly people staying in the Yacht Club were traveling with friends and family who weren't in the Yacht Club and so would bring guests in, mostly heading up to the deck but sometimes also in the lounge and a blind eye was basically turned to this in my experience. I do feel though 
an even bigger Yacht Club Plus was all the things designed to get me around those crowds on the ship. For example, check-in was incredible considering the many thousands of people that they kind of have to check in uh, to board the ship. On the day I embarked, I could check in at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. so early. There was a dedicated spot to hand my suitcase in before I was then whisked past the lines for security. I was shown again, escorted to a special seated check-in area where I was offered drinks and snacks while I was checked in at my seat. Then I was escorted and whisked by a butler right straight through up to the Yacht Club lounge. I was in that lounge, I would say probably 18 minutes at the most after pulling up at the terminal. Another was avoiding the crowds for excursions. Instead of having to join hundreds and hundreds of people meeting in the various venues to depart, I just had to wait in the Yacht Club lounge. Once the tour bus was actually ready to depart, a butler would then whisk me down through security right out to the bus or the port side departure. And Yacht Club guests got priority. For example, in Flam, uh, we were led right at the front of the many hundreds of people queuing for the scenic train. So we got to board it first. We get to, got to choose the very best seats. In Alden, for example, I was led by a butler right up to the shuttle bus to the Lone Skylift. I boarded that first, so I was able to get a great seat off really fast and onto the Skylift quickly. Seeing shows in the theatre also meant skipping crowds and lines. Now, as the MSC Virtuosa Theatre holds way fewer than a thousand people, they ran three shows every night. And so the you know, kind of regular travelers had to book. And so some of the shows got sold out. So guests also still had to wait in long lines, even if they booked to get scanned into the theater. But there was a dedicated yacht club seating area, meaning no booking. And I could also get whisked down if I wanted to buy a butler past all those lines if I wanted to. So even sold out shows for everybody else, like the crew talent show, the opera shows, anybody in your club wanted to see those absolutely could without booking. For the Cirque du Soleil style shows in the Carousel Lounge, again, we Yacht Club guests were escorted down by Butler past the lines and we got to choose our seat before uh, the other passengers did. The Yacht Club concierge desk also was meant there was no waiting in the often long lines of guest services too, so that was really good. The lounge and bar meant no fighting in the evenings to find a seat in the other bars, which were always busy or waiting for ages to get a drink, which could happen in the other bars. In the Yacht Club lounge, there was always space to sit and there was also live music uh, performed there too in the evenings. Dining also offered a way around the crowds. Non-Yacht Club guests were allocated one of the three dining times, 5.30, 7.30 or 9.30 p.m. Few options for any time dining or even changing the time you're allocated. It was busy and hectic in the main dining rooms, tables tightly packed together. In the Yacht Club, it was open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It was open seated dining, so I could go anytime I wanted when it was open. I could have a table by myself, or I could choose to sit with others if I met other people if I wanted to, so lots of flexibility. On the Yacht Club deck, they served buffet-style breakfast and lunch, so again, there was no need to battle the many crowds in the very popular marketplace buffet. On disembarkation day, I could meet at the lounge, and the minute the ship was cleared, we Yacht Club guests could get off because our bags were taken off first. Again, I was whisked down by a butler, jumped the queues. The ship was cleared, by the way, at 6.30 a.m. I was in a taxi heading to the train station to head home within 15 minutes. For me, probably the biggest plus of the Yacht Club was how it actually helped me avoid the downsides of the crowds, skip all the lines on this big resort ship. In fact, some of the premium and the pampering aspects that I expected were going to be the highlights were actually less so rather than these. So let me explain a little bit around that. Now I have cruised on some high-end lines in the past like Celebrity Retreat Suites, Cunard, Queen's Grill, and even on luxury lines like Seabourn and Regent Seven Seas. And many people have asked me during and after if the Yacht Club was that kind of experience, was it that premium? Now I think it missed in two striking ways. First of all, the service and attention to detail was pretty good, but it was varied, it was erratic at times, and it definitely wasn't very personal 
or personalized, something that the more luxury high-end lines kind of master. That's their, almost their point of difference, as you were. So even though I was on there for a week, the concierge or the rest of the crew in the yacht club never greeted me by name, which of course is the norm on those other lines. It's much more personal, uh, getting to know you. Many on the desk, by the way, didn't even greet me. Uh, they sort of didn't make eye contact, and I had to fight to attract attention at times. The butler service, personally, I found erratic, and it seemed to be very much varied based on you know who you were allocated rather than kind of a consistent service. Now I did have a less optimal experience because my butler disappeared for a couple of days off ill, they weren't substituted, uh, they weren't covered by another butler, so my poor cabin steward sort of had to sort of try and do some butlering duties and all their cleaning duties. So I didn't find the overall service in the restaurant or across the yacht club matched a high-end line, but it was definitely faster than across the ship overall, so it was better than the rest of the ship. Another example of how that kind of promise and reality of premiumness did not match was I was sent a very beautiful email before the cruise asking me to submit all my preferences, like the type of pillow, the minibar items, what daily newspaper I wanted to deliver. They paid absolutely no attention to it, and I did see several people going to the concierge desk and saying, whatever happened to those requests we were asked to submit, and the concierge didn't seem to know anything about them. Secondly, I thought the food was good and I enjoyed it, and Yacht Club did have a different menu to the main dining room, but I did not find it as elevated as on other more premium lines in their equivalent restaurant like Queen's Grill or Celebrity Lumini. Though to be fair, those also charge dramatically more, so I feel I had to consider this when really assessing kind of the state of the food. Now I was actually concerned at my very first meal, which was lunch on embarkation day, because the salad looked very kind of basic, didn't look very attractive, and it had lettuce that was all kind of wilted and brown on the edges. However, over the week I did find that was an exception. The Yacht Club ingredients seemed pretty good, and the menus had a decent choice, a good pasta especially, that probably lacked some of the finesse and the flair on more premium lines. So it was good, but it wasn't of the same scale. I, I always found dishes that appealed, and after that initial reservation, I didn't really have any other issues. I would say though, the gala night dinner menu, which had beef wellington, was uh, the highlight of the week. And I do actually think, to be fair, that the chocolate volcano cake dessert, which many lines get horribly wrong, was probably the best that I've had at sea. The Yacht Club was good value for what it is, and I decided that for anybody who wants the benefits of the buzz and excitement of a big ship, with the ability to dip into water box, rope climbing, production shows, and so on, it was good, but if they also wanted that, but wanted to be able to escape the noise and the hustle and the bustle, uh, and have ways of mitigating the crowds, then the Yacht Club is a plus, but it's not of the same scale of other premium lines. For me though, it was not enough, because MSC itself had issues that I think you also need to consider if you're thinking of the Yacht Club. So watch this video where I dive into all of those, starting with the biggest misconception about MSC cruises. See you over there.